All right, we're good. Is this good? Can you see me? Okay. So I'm Tish Ferguson. I am a makeup artist, hairstylist, and male groomer in television and media. Extraordinaire, but okay. Um, I'm cool. I'm good. I'm alright. I'm great. Okay. Uh, good affirmations? Fuck it up, sis. You the shit. Hey. Okay. Alright. <laughs> and I have my friend with me, because friends lift you up in that. Yes, manner. they do. That's have my friend. Thing. And my friend Akila. Hi. Tell me what you do, sis. I am a makeup artist for a couple of TV networks. She's pretty dope. Pretty dope. And that's why I have her here because all my friends are dope. You know, Every we last try. Time. We try. But you do other things too. I mean, yes. We'll get into that later. Sure. Okay. Okay, cool. So, I'll be doing another professional makeup artist makeup. And Breaking if well. you are a makeup artist, you can understand how nerve wracking that this can be. It's just like if you were to do the hair of another hairstylist or paint the house of another painter. Exactly. I you know what I mean? It's just like, what she doing. you know, the person that you're servicing knows all the ins and outs of what you're doing. So there's no like, you better get it right, sis, the first and get time. it all the way right. Or she'll never exactly. let you touch your face again. Exactly. Okay. Um, I've actually been in this situation before where I was hired to do one of my friend's wedding. She's a makeup artist. Wow. And she hired me to do her makeup and the whole wedding party. Oh, I was so honored. <laughs> shout out to Candace, Candio. Shout out. Shout out to, to Chad and oh Candace. Y'all are all right. Um, so <laughs> this is why we don't work together. <laughs> so let's tell them how we met, though. I met you at Fox News. Yeah. So I started working at Fox News last December. Yep. Wow. I used to see Akila all over the place. But I never really said anything to her. <laughs> and then one day we just started talking. We were saying, well, she always said hello. Because you always say hello to people. I try to say I try to be nice. You are good with that. You always say hello. I know I'm you may not always talk to people, but you do say hello. Yeah, no. It's it was probably too early in the morning for all of that. Yeah, anyway, you keep so. it. I think I'm like I was coming in for like Probably coming in for like an 11 o'clock shift and you were leaving for like 10 30 yep. or something like that. So I was definitely not. Yes, she'd be working in the wee hours of the morning. Yes. I she actually was hours. working 2 30 a.m. this morning at MSNBC? No, at a WNBC. Oh. A local. Oh. So don't do that. <laughs> No Different branches. Oh okay. no, man. Um, so that's where she was working, guys. Yes. And she came and still shot with me today, and I'm yes. really excited. So if you see dark circles or like you know low eyes, I'm sleepy. But you know. that's what you call a real friendship. But that's yeah, because my bed is like, hey girl, you miss me? <laughs> when the last time you see me? I know for me, I don't know if it's for you, but I think it's for you too. When I do jobs and I see. The other sisters. It's like, come here. Yeah, like, hey, hey girl. We said, stick together. You here too? <laughs> okay. We're all together. We all at the table. <laughs> we all gonna do it. Okay, that. let's eat together. <laughs> exactly. So that's the feeling that mm -hmm. I got. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, like, it's another one of Well, we yes. finally had a conversation. So <laughs> I'm happy that you're here. Thank you. Today I'm gonna do like a really fresh look. Akila does like when she does do her makeup it's <clears throat> wow it's like fresh yeah and and i say that because we be, we're like we work all the time yeah and who has time to be standing in front of the mirror doing their makeup especially when you're working 2 a.m yeah 2 a.m shifts and you that's ridiculous seven. first of all where do you have the most experience like where would you say is like your expertise when it comes to makeup um, news, more so, talking head people, news, um, I do a little special effects, but not, like, a whole lot, because I just don't do it, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, news and regular faces, you know, just regular people, um, that's kind of where I am right now. How long have you been doing makeup? 11 whole years. Oh. 
I'm 40, y'all, so 11 years, yes. I was to put that out there. She doesn't look a day over 25. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. say that. Oh, I could fall asleep right now. Oh. Uh, do you know all my clients say that every time I do their makeup? Man, just get this. Is it because you're tired or is it because I have like a good, a nice little touch, nice energy? I mean, both. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get that. So, did you have like a career before makeup? I started fiddling with makeup when I was like 17. Mm. And at the time, I was like all gung ho and forward about trying to be like a dancer. So, I was oh, like, really? What type of dancing? No, um, modern ballet. Um, hip hop and African, and I love house too. So, you know, that was just kind of where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. But it took a while. So, because I lived in Philly initially, and you know, I wound up moving to New York when I was 23, mm -hmm. and went to college for about a year. Met some really great people at the college I went to, CW Post. Oh, my you know. father went there. Really? Mm -hmm. That school is actually really cool. It just, just okay. costs too much. But and that's why he stopped going there. <laughs> yeah, it was 30 G's and I was like... Yeah, it's expensive. Mm -mm. But no, I met some cool people. Had like a dance, you know, from, I think it was called Technique back in the day. But yeah, so I moved, yeah, sure. yeah, I moved to Brooklyn. Started taking classes at Albanelli and okay. the Dance Center. So I mean, you know, so it's got some moves. Excuse? Takes a me. Bit. Just a little minute to get there now, but you know. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much me at heart. Um, makeup just kind of came into the for came into play for you know actually in the play like around when I was twenty five, mm -hmm. and I moved back to Jersey because the sis was broke, and um, started working for Bobby Brown at Quaker Bridge Mall. No, yeah, for Lord and Taylor, and they fired me. So. Why did they wait? <laughs> you can't, you can't skip over that. Why did well, they fire you? They fired me because they claimed that I didn't have like enough credit cards and I didn't have enough sales. But I got like a four hundred dollars sale and like a credit card the day before, some crap like that. So I was like, whatever. And I had already been stalking the Mac counter and knew everybody by that time. Mm -hmm. So when they fired me, I hauled my little till over there. It was like, look. They fired me, so I need a feeling position here. What do you guys have? And it took a little while, like not a long while, but I want to say by like November. I think I got fired in like, what, September, October? And then like in November of that same year, I started freelancing for them. Hmm. And then that January, I became permanent and that became my life with Mac. Wow. Yeah. So. So when you were working for Mac, did you like move up in the ranks, or you stayed just a an artist? Did what? Did you have like any interest in management? Well, I mean, I did have interest in management only because you know more money. Mm -hmm. Um. But one of the things I hated most about Mac was that it was retail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, don't we all? We love you, Matt. Cosmetics. Right. Thank we you. We love you. Thank you, but not that retail. Thank you for all of the experience. I was a freelancer for Mac. Oh, really? Yeah, I freelanced for Mac for about two years. Hmm. I didn't want to be permanent, though. Because that permanent life ain't, ain't for everybody. Sheesh. Because I, I kind of did it backwards. Yeah. When I wanted to work at Mac, it was at the beginning of my career, but they wouldn't hire me because I didn't have any experience. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Then, maybe three years into my career, I had like a side job at Carol's Daughter at Roosevelt Field Mall. And then with that retail experience, I just walked up into with it's, it's beauty retail experience that you need for yeah. Mac. Mm -hmm. So even though I had retail experience at Macy's and all, they didn't care about that. Beauty yeah. retail experience. I had a couple of months under my belt with Carol's daughter and I walked right into Mac and was just like, yo, here's yeah. my portfolio. This is what I did like. Cause yeah, before, before I even went to the counter, I applied for Mac like at least two or three times, got three or four interviews and they were like, nope. So, yo, Mac can there, be the hardest. Bruh, they want your whole DNA. Yo. 
so. But it's like Mac is for the artist, so it's like yeah. they really like. At once upon a time, they really made sure that the person that they were hiring was artist focused and really witted. And yeah, it's about giving people raw lipstick and wrong eyeshadow, wrong foundation. Right. Color. Like no. You know who I've always wanted to work for? Who? Kevin Aquan. Oh, I'm about to use that skin enhancer on her. That's amazing. And. Kevin Aquan is amazing. Y'all need to get into uh, it. Did you see that documentary? No. For Kevin, they did a documentary of like his life and stuff. Really? Yup. I think I it was like on Logo. At home. Everybody should have that book. Everyone. Well, if you do as a makeup artist. If you don't, you slipping. I'm about to be fresh faced, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. You mm -hmm. have really good skin. It's my parents' thing. Let me say that right now. Like, it's funny because people say that a lot, and I just look at them like, y'all don't understand what I don't do to my skin. And I just want to like, I just want to enhance what you have. You know what? I'm gonna use this um, Smashbox primer water mm -hmm. to kind of make it. What the primer water does is kind of like, you know, makes the foundation a little. Yeah. It's cool because you can, yes. I mean, now that I don't work for MAC, I'm able to really look at other products mm -hmm. and be like, oh, that actually works well too. Because when you work for MAC for so long, it's like, I'm not paying full price no more. Right. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and you get real exactly. makeup. Like, exactly. Nah, I'm exactly. Good. <laughs> but now it's like, I mean, you know, <laughs> we'll figure it out somehow. I can't. Sorry, it's true. I don't that time. Mm -hmm. But your whole kit be back, sis. I mean, I do appreciate it because I mean, I got you know the best training there, and my artistry definitely grew because I was there all the time. Like I was there from like what, two, like 2008 to like 2015. So wow, yeah, they had all my life. Same so, location or? Oh my god, no. Jesus you moved Lord, Jesus different Christ. locations. Yeah, um, um, I was at Quaker Bridge in New Jersey, in Trenton, New Jersey, Lawrenceville, New Jersey, same difference. Um, I was there for about a few years, and then I got all big and bad and, you know, adventurous, adventurous and I moved to L.A. And what? I call her my friend and stuff, but you know how you don't be knowing stuff about some of your friends? I didn't know that. I mean, <laughs> people be having whole lives and they'll never. So you lived in LA. Yeah, but because I mean, all right. I like makeup a lot, but that's literally not my career. So I went out there to try to like make it as an actress and like actress and do, you know, background work, trying mm -hmm. to like get that sad card because you know that's what you need in life. <laughs> um, which is funny because I actually got like two sad vouchers out there, but I haven't been able to seal that deal. So, um, so yeah, I was out there, I, I became a third key holder out there. Oh, okay. Um, that's management, right? Yeah. So, and that was like my only, one of the only time I was management. And after that, I was like, I'm good on the permanency of you guys. I need to be freelance. I need to be, I need to be able to tell myself when I'm going on vacation. Um, yep. I need to be able to tell you when I'm going to take a day off and you're not going yep. to take So, uh, yeah, nah, I'm good. So then I wound up coming back over here because I had a, con a, a conspiracy, a a contributor who I did a makeup job for at a photo shoot for some boudoir studio. And she's like, I, have, I can help you get in the box. And I was like, well, I live in LA, so. She's like, well, you don't want to be the one in LA. You want to be the one in New York because that's where you're going to get like the most hours. It's bigger. So I was like, okay, I guess. Not knowing like, <laughs> not knowing the amount of like hours or just like the, the, what is the word? Like the, just what she was saying, like I wasn't yeah. paying attention. I was so focused on me living in LA where it's like, I'm not going back to right. New York. I'm not going back to Jersey. Are you serious? But uh, situations happened and where did Tequila end up? Back in New Jersey. So <laughs> it took me about, like, actually I wound up in Philly with my mom for a little bit. And then I wound up 
waiting like a month, having interviews, talking to different managers, and then in November 2015, that's when I started. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. Do you miss LA? Um, yes and no. I miss um, the friendships that I cultivated there. Mm. Um, Cause there's some really cool people that I that I can really honestly call friends out there. Right. Um, the weather, it's cute. It's cute. Well, I mean, it's cute. Like, I mean, I'm I'm an East Coast girl, first of all, first and foremost. So me looking at Christmas with palm trees and like no snow, I couldn't take that seriously. It was like, what do y'all? No, this is no. I'm, I'm good. Mm. You know. So, but I, I appreciate the experience of living in LA because at least I can say that I lived there, and this is why. I will work there. I'll have work there, but I will. You'll never catch me like living there like permanently. Mm. You don't you know. see like Rayland family there. No. Like, oh my God. No. Stuff. No. Mm -mm. I need a family with Tim's. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. I need a yeah. whole Brooklyn family. I guess. Maybe with a rest. Don't get me started. I'm sorry, what was your question? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Henny go down smooth, you know what I'm saying? Yes, Jesus. That's how we get down here at Tisha Friends, Literally. okay? I'm you need the cocktails. The, co the, the cocktails. The cocktails. The cocktails. What? That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh god. This is gonna be a long video. <laughs> so what was the moment that you knew? Like, okay, I want to oops, sorry. I we're gonna do that again because I'm not gonna poke your eye on camera. Oh. Um, <laughs> so let's go stand in the corner! <laughs> So you coming back to New York was when you decided that you like, this is what I'm doing. Freelancing permanently, this is how my income is coming in. Well, yeah, I mean, I think when I left Mac permanently, like I knew from there, even before I came back to the East Coast that I wanted to be a freelance something. Um, but unfortunately, when I got back to Jersey and I started getting that Fox money, I was like, ooh, permanent mm. look great. But then obviously with permanency comes responsibility and comes restrictions that I just wasn't ready to give give them. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that it's, it's a bad thing because it's not, but I think wherever you are in your career, wherever you are in your life, you have to make the decisions that are best for you. Right. And not based on monetary. Right. If that makes any sense. Right. I know that sounds crazy because it's like- Because right. we let the bag decide yeah. what we're gonna do right. and then we're not happy right and then you want to be okay. miserable for like a hundred years and you're like why am i still in the same spot and it's like well because you didn't step out and do what you were supposed to do right so i think had i turned permanent with fox although i don't mind coming there i don't mind working there as a freelancer i think you know where my life is now there's absolutely no way that i could stomach being permanent anywhere right regardless of where it would be because I'm literally all over the place and I actually like my life like that like I feel mm. like for me I have uh what is it called um chaotic uh controlled chaos mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you know I like being able to do different things and go different places and all right I'm out right you know and just be out for a couple of days where's the at? Where I like that because it keeps me inspired right. more than anything. So, yeah, I'm cool with it. When did you decide that you wanted to be a makeup artist? Um, at 25, I had a mid, no. At 25, I, I had a quarter life crisis. Really? And a nervous breakdown. Oh. I was working in corporate America. Oh, and understandable. That's not what I wanted to be doing. And yes, there were a lot of other outside factors. Yeah. Dealing with anxiety and panic disorder and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I think I was like recently diagnosed, maybe a few months before that. Wow. And then 
Um, so knew about your friends, huh? Yeah. Like 20, was it 24? 24 I was diagnosed with panic disorder, mm -hmm. anxiety, um, PTSD, and clinical depression. PTSD? Yeah. So, Check on your girl, your your girl got baggage, okay? Check on your strong friends, Baggage please. that I left off at the airport, though. Lord! I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Check on your strong friends, please. And I had um, basically a nervous breakdown at work one day. Wow. I had to be rushed to the hospital. And it was in the ambulance when my pressure was going down and they didn't know what was wrong with me. They're just like, cause I was like, I have chest pains, I couldn't breathe. It was the scariest thing and it was the most embarrassing thing. Yeah. Because there was no explanation yeah. as to why I needed to be rushed to the hospital. Right. And that was the moment where it was like, I'm in a place where I'm not supposed to be. Exactly. You know? And I left corporate America. I worked on myself for a few months and then I took a stab at it doing uh Doing makeup, professional. You didn't look back since. Nope. And when I said I was gonna do it, I went all in. Yeah. So there wasn't any like, oh, I'm going to work this nine to five, and then I'm gonna do makeup on the weekends. It was none like of that. One or the other. And people always say that I've gotten success so fast, and the reason being is because I just dropped everything. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, it's it's believing in yourself and having faith that you know what I don't know what I'm gonna do, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I know God is gonna work it right. out, and that's literally all that matters. Yep. So. I hear you, girl. I used to use this Kevin Kwan under the eyes all the time. Mm -hmm. No, I don't like it. I like it on the face, but I don't know if I necessarily like it under the eyes. Okay. You know? Because you're just going to take it off, I guess. I'm not going to take it off. I'm just going to diffuse it. Oh. Because it's so, you know, it's like, it's so, um, what is the word? Don't. <laughs> I'm trying to help you out. It's so. Um, is it heavy looking? Not that it's heavy looking. It's just so opaque. Yes, and it takes too much work to blend it out, gotcha. and that's not something I want to do. Gotcha. Under the eye, especially gotcha. with a client, because the under eye is so sensitive. Yeah. And it's like I don't want to be like. Right. And you're like, are you done? And then what I found is the more time you spend under the eye with clients, especially women of a certain age, they start to create um, insecurities. Yeah. Because they're like, what are you trying to cover? What's right. going on? Right. Am I like wrinkling? Is something happening? I just know I probably got black dark circles, so you do what you gotta do. One thing I'm gonna say that I think is really good that happened on camera is that so some people really like a really bright highlight. That's not that's not my style of makeup. No Jesus. So her highlight is a little brighter than I would want it. And the Kevin Aquan Skin Enhancer is pretty creamy. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, because it's okay to make mistakes. That's what that's you what happens. We make mistakes all the time. As long as you clean it. You up. just have to know how to fix it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with a little AJ Crimson. Yes, AJ! And it's gonna kinda be the color of her skin. Okay. And just diffuse this a little bit. AJ is has some slip to it, so it's not like, yeah. you know. Yeah, I'm already getting what I want to do. And you can make all of these, like you can um, not make these mistakes, but like uh, <laughs> fix these mistakes yeah. before you set it. Because once you set it, it's over. She just gonna have a bright ass highlight. And uh, looking like somebody's nana. What? 
You know how those ladies have like the real highlight and the strong jaw and the This is real no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, right. I don't know <laughs> Who Nana got a strong highlight and a, and a, What? They don't wanna they don't wanna give it up. Like they don't wanna yeah. let it go. They wanna get that I'm done. I'm just saying. I find because of the way AJ's consistency is, mm -hmm. I can add it to anything. And it's just perfect. Yeah, this is what I want. Yep. Brought it down just a little bit. Come on, ew. I mean, you know. First of all, I don't understand why. What? I be so ghetto sometimes. <laughs> why you? Because. Like, I grew up, like, I'm originally from Brooklyn, but I grew up in Long Island. Who and like, Long Island is ghetto? Oh, there's some ghetto parts. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Hempstead, uh, this is very true. Amityville. Uh, okay, all right. I mean, I didn't picture those uh, areas, so, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I was in Hicksville, Brooklyn. Wide Dance, okay. Shout out to y'all, but it's hood. Um, I hate your mess, you know. I think what happened, this is what my friends say. What happened was, I went away to college. I went to Lincoln University. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I'm from Philly, so I could do that. Thank Lincoln you. University, LU, 1854, <laughs> first HBCU oh for sure, God. okay? Lincoln. I'm from Philly, I could do that. So I went to Lincoln, went to an HBCU, and... Got a little uh, diverse, you know what I'm saying? Huh, okay. Just a little diverse. Just a, just a little? Yeah. You sure just a little? So I'm taking her lashes and I'm actually curling them to give them so they can be up a little bit more because she has small eyes and we don't want the lashes to. Oh, eyes. You do, you got little baby eyes. Wow, really? <laughs> baby eyes? <laughs> And so we don't want to close her eyes. Thanks. Go see the video with her and her boo. If you didn't, go take a look because they're adorable. They are adorable and it is amazing. Thanks. Black girl love. Thank you. Continue. Thanks. He's amazing. You see the glow, right? Okay. Just put that out there. He's great. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> and this is the first time that I'm like, I'm okay with like, talking about this stuff on camera because I don't feel like I'm gonna have to worry about like deleting yeah, the footage. <laughs> he was on Cause you know how you break up with somebody and then you gotta delete all your pictures on Instagram? It's like, oh, I don't know you And it's just like, ah, ah, like why? Like I'm good. Not with this one though. He's great. But it's funny though, because like every time I run into somebody that hasn't seen me, they're like, they're like, um, you've just been glowing. That's what a real good relationship is. You're just doing. so happy. <laughs> and I'm like, so I wasn't happy before. No. I was. Not according to If me. I wasn't happy before, I would not have been able to attract Jeremy. Ha! Thank you. Thank you. Because he's literally a mirror and a reflection of how I feel about myself. Because if I really think about it, mm -hmm. there were men, keep your eyes open, there were men that I was with mm -hmm. that the way they treated me is exactly how I treated myself. Wow. And it's funny because I don't think we realize that. And then we wonder why we got like these trifling dudes like around us and it's like because there's yep. something in you that you're not dealing with yeah so because you're not willing to deal with it you're just all over the place attracting these crazy people yeah because you won't deal with you or you can be just like me and just be too busy mm -mm. it's the red night game no i actually really am busy though like it's no just... but it's not about you are yeah you are busy but you ain't never too busy you make time for what you want to make time for. Look down and look that way. And that's a fact. Like I said. I'm not any less busier because I'm in a relationship. That's true. I'm busy. I'm busy, but I make time. We we figure it out. 
True, but I see, I, I feel like, you know, it could be an excuse, it could be a reason. I feel like the guys that I've, I have met, you know, they feel like because I'm so okay. busy that, you know, I'm doing too much. And it's like, no, I'm making moves. I'm doing my purpose. I got stuff to do. Like, mm -hmm. no, how about you do what you need to do? But I guarantee you, when it's somebody you really want to make time for, it won't even matter. You get everything done. Like now, I be on some art, right, so I got a job tomorrow, so I gotta pack my kit. <laughs> he gets off of work at like seven o'clock. I gotta make sure that my kit is packed and all of that, so that uh, mm -hmm. I have time for him tonight. Like when it's somebody that I don't care about. Listen. I mean, I'm, I get it. Yeah, I get it. I'd be like, oh my god, I don't want to have company because it's gonna distract me and. <laughs> it's such an excuse. <laughs> No, I mean, you're right. I feel like, you know, when that time comes, um, it'll happen. I think because my, and it's it's such a detriment to who I am as a person because I'm so like into what I'm doing right now mm -hmm. that I don't look up to see what's around me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if, he, if someone approached me, I would be so like into what I'm you wouldn't doing. even realize what's right. Going on. Like, oh, well, the funny part about me is I'm oblivious to anything. Like, if you don't tell me, Akila, I'm feeling you. <laughs> I, I am just not. Man, I just don't know what you're doing. I don't take, you know, the flirting. I don't take the, you know, signs. Like, I, bruh, my brain is so not into that. It's like Akila needs, I'm feeling you. That's what she needs. Very black and white, point blank period. There is no discussion. Because other than that, I don't see it. I'm the same way. That's how I do online dating. Really? Yeah. I met Jeremy on Hinge. Really? Shout out to Hinge. The <sighs> app that's meant to be deleted. I deleted that joint within a week. <laughs> Wow, look at God. What Listen. Do so do you think Jeremy like epitomizes what you want? Yeah. I wrote Jeremy down on paper before I met Jeremy. Ew. So Yeah. Write the vision, make a pain. A back of two two. What's a two one? Something like that, but you got the point. Last year I did this like exercise. Mm -hmm. With one of my best friends, I read this book, uh, Love Will Find You, mm -hmm. and it's uh, exercises that you do at every end of the chapter to like really unpack baggage and like yeah, and be like ready and prepared. Yeah, yeah. And um, last year, last year March, April, yeah, is when I started the book. I ended it in June, mm -hmm. and I wrote down exactly everything that I wanted. And when I met Jeremy, it was like... You just kind of like, what's going on? I met Jeremy a year from when I started that book. Wow, that's dope. And then within a week of being around him, it was kind of like... It, it's like when something's happening, you're like... Huh? Hold on. Yeah. Because I was dating. I was dating a few people. Right. And I was having a good time. And then he came and it was that? like... Pause. Wait a minute. <laughs> What is going on? So for all y'all heifers who are in a relationship, deal with yourself first, in layman terms. Please. So like, I'm enjoying the ride. I enjoy what this is. And it's the first time that I'm like, not thinking about like, so like, are we gonna get married? How yeah. fast are we going? Yeah. When, da, da, da. like, because I'm just like, letting it go. Those, when you ask like, questions like that, and when, you, when you're so like, not staccato, but just like checklist type on your relationship. It takes the fun out of it. it takes yeah. the joy out of it. And it's We're like literally just, just letting everything happen the way it's is. gonna happen. And that's how it should be. You should just let things happen. Like, yeah, it's pretty interesting. But she is glowing, y'all. Like she like glowing, glowing. Like we all see it from across the street. It's funny because I have a friend that every time I post a picture of Jeremy, he's like, oh, you finally found time, huh? <laughs> wow. 
Yeah. Because I was always like, I'm so busy. That's hilarious. He's like, why are you trying to sound like me? You finally found time. No, I mean, like, here's the thing. I feel like if a person came to me that was, I don't want to say worth my time, like. No, but dead ass worth your time because your time is motherfucking money. Do you know? Listen, your time is worth your money. You know why? Because literally, every time we put somebody on the schedule, cha-ching, that's bread in the motherfucking bank account. So, yes, your time is money, that's okay? What, that's what the Lincoln came out, y'all. So, say it and say no, it I'm proud. Just, I'm just saying, Because like <laughs> dudes need to understand that when you are messing with a woman that works for herself, you do not waste her time. What you doing? Not making no plans. Doing a little hey big head Texas and all of that. Uh, I'm too no, old, I'm too old for that. No, I, I, when I when I say worth my time, I mean like you know he's working on. She him. made exactly what I was saying. I did, but not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I, I just feel like you know when a person that is uh, approaches me like a grown man. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because I think that's what turns me off right from the beginning okay. like approach me like a grown man like don't do little boy stuff and you 40 mm -hmm. don't you know what I mean like don't come at me like some other person like some other chick that you saw on the street like nah like you see me you know what I'm about you already like come on right. like come on so do you like now that you're 40 do you date older or younger because now you're in the cougar age oh my god but Cougar is good. I mean, but no shade. I don't look 40 anyway. You don't. So you can so bag them at 25. Do That's way too young. Oh. No. She tried it. No. No, I think it's weird. It's so, you know what? You know what the funny part about it is? Initially, like when I was in my 30s, I had like a, a cutoff. It was like, all right, I'm only going to do five years younger or five years older. <laughs> like, I did. So I was like, no, this is crazy. I'm not gonna date nobody mad younger or mad older. We're gonna be right in the middle and we're gonna be good. And that is it. And then I grew up. And then I was like, okay, so we might have to broaden that horizon because um I'll leave people nameless. But the people that I have dealt with, <laughs> the people that I've dealt with in the past. They've been, you know, different ages. And when you think about the type of man that you think you want, <sighs> and then you get that job. Right, and you're just like, eh. um, that's not what I want. No, no. So it's like growing and really understanding life and understanding that life handles men different, uh, what's the word I want to use? Different uh, challenges mm -hmm. that you can't expect someone to be A1 if you're not A1. Mm, right, you know? right. You can't expect someone to have all of these, you know, checklist things that you want, but you're not a snack or a meal yourself. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So yep. it's like you want all these expectations. Have, right. Yeah. You want all these expectations, but you're not gonna be a checklist for him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh Akila, so pump your brakes, sis. And then on top of that, you I also had um <clears throat> leave the nameless, you know, mm -hmm. guys who were and I don't wanna say this to be like uh conceited because it's not where I'm coming from um, intimidated on the things that I do mm -hmm. you know so it was like oh my god you do too many things pick one oh my god what? and it's like how about you pick one right like bruh and I think what what's what's so hard about that is like I okay <laughs> transparency 101 uh-huh I am a I love struggle love like I do, I like the we grinding together and we moving up and building an empire. Yeah, but let's together. make sure that the people know that struggle love doesn't mean that you're being dumb. Yeah, and no. no. Like he's working on his thing, right? I'm working on we coming our up thing together, and coming, right? Not homie sitting at home while you grinding, right? And you <clears> trying <throat> to pour into him, but he ain't taking nothing from it. We had that too. 
Yeah. So I mean, like so. I've learned, I've learned the type of struggle love that I can deal with. But um, I feel like if you see me in my ugly and you see me, you know, before everything goes dope, it's like we're in this together. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I have no problem in being the one that makes more money because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. at the drop of a hat, then you can switch around and yep. you're making more money. Yep. So it's like monetary gain is not the... What's so the freaking true. Yeah, it's not the like the reason I'm going to be with you or not. It's more of do we connect? Like right. do we have the same kind of purpose? Are we in the same? You know what I mean? Things like that. Do you that. have vision, bro? Do you have a vision? And even if you haven't, you don't know how to like maneuver it. That's when we work together to get both of our things together. Exactly. And to work. So it's like you know having that person who isn't intimidated by the stuff that you do. But also realizing that at the end of the day, when I walk through those doors, I'm not a director or a writer or a singer or a dancer. I'm your woman. Right. Who needs support and who needs a back rub. And that's it. Like, right. I'm not a director coming home. I am a healer coming in this door. Like, can I get a hug? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like guys who who are intimidated that in that vein is like, bruh, if you look at who she is, and being your woman and just kind of like wipe out all of that, mm -hmm. you'll be fine. Cause then you, they always feel like, well, she has all of this. What does she need me for? Mm -hmm. And it's like, bro, she needs you for support. Right. She needs you to be like right. that man that's gonna support her and be there for her, mm -hmm. you know? So, and vice versa. But they don't know no better. Okay. And it's like, well, sorry for you. Yo, this is Vanessa Myrick's lip palette. Yo, follow her, man. She, yo. The biggest inspiration. Bruh. I look at her. Who so are your, like, big inspiration people? Oh, uh, first of all, congrats. Yeah, like, I'm about to put some of that on top of this. Yes! Sorry. That was all key and excitement, and I don't really care. That shit was together. Because Pat McGrath, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. She's everything. And Zar. Oh, this head wrap. Sorry. I would say Janessa is one, yes. Pat McGrath, Morel Hollis, mm -hmm. and I have the pleasure of being able to assist him, which is like that's really cool. makeup artist goals for real. Yeah. Um, it was also about Sam Fine. Oh, that's not epic. Sam. That's not epic. Come on, it's Sam. Legit, like. So story time. I got to work alongside Sam Fine. And Sam has always been a bucket list. Like I've been to one of his classes, like yeah. the class that he had with Rennie Vasquez. Oh, he's a good one too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all need to like. Rennie's done my makeup before. Rennie, yeah, Rennie is such a great friend. Um, so like, uh, a good Sam. Yeah, how are you just gonna put that out there? Like, oh, it was nothing. I'm just saying. So <laughs> Sam, it was such a bucket list. When I was hired for the rundown, mm -hmm. the day we were doing the billboards and all the promotional materials, yeah. Sam was hired to do makeup that day and I was doing hair. So it wasn't that I was assisting him, it wasn't that I was shadowing I him. him. I was his peer that day. <laughs> oh, man, and it was man, like... Man. And he was so great when he found out that I was going to be doing Robin Thede's hair and makeup on a consistent basis. Because me doing hair, he was like, I didn't know you were a makeup artist. Also, he was like, once he found out I was a makeup artist, he was like, come over here. Come here. Stand here. <laughs> yes. Watch what I'm doing. And he yes. walked me through every, like, That's he is just, knows. he is a teacher. Like, he is a yeah. born educator. For you to want to pour into people like that and Literally. you don't even know them. That's amazing. Oh, Sam. That's why he, it's important. Like, if you want to be a makeup artist, it's not just about doing what's trendy for the day. Mm -hmm. You have to really, like, look at the legends. I mean, shout out to Romero Jenny. Like, let's not Oh, like Romero! Romero! Like, bruh. I remember him when I started Mac. Just, like, looking at him like he is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Carrie Blair, yeah, like, yeah. There's so many people, and it's like you have to just really immerse yourself into the culture of being a makeup artist and knowing 
just the different people and the different styles and just like yeah don't let instagram and social media make you feel like this is all you can do like broaden yourself because you'll make more money and you'll see more things like that yeah as opposed to just i'm gonna be an instagram makeup artist and that's it and that's how you make your money that's great but you want to just use your brain mm -hmm. and expose mm -hmm. yourself to so much other things that will keep you that will give you longevity mm -hmm. so That's but I want to say thank you, Akila. Of course. You're so pretty. I <laughs> thank love you, your girl. Makeup, and I need to do it again. She about to do this for the rest of her life. She wouldn't realize it. We are done. And we thank are you the for joining us. We are the champion. My friend. Dun, dun, dun.